the Raiders play the starring role in last Monday's State of Origin showdown. Beninga floats it across. Mullins goes through the gap. Comes to the defence. Finds Meninga. Cameron likes of Meninga. Stewart and Daly push the excitement button again. Here goes Daly. A run of 20 metres. Orford for the corner. The big swallow down. Or will a determined east side overcome a tiring Canberra outfit? Appleby, Tim Dirk. This could be a penalty try. And Samantha placed in the top five. Freeman, he sees the fullback is deep, gets the lovely bounce. Now to Silva. Four manly players are chasing. Silva. The Roosters, the Raiders on nine wine world of sports. <laughs> Lights up for the greatest game of all. East and Canberra on Friday Night Football. 1995, the Western Reds enter the Winfield Cup competition, showing just how far rugby league has evolved here in WA. Tonight, we make our annual pilgrimage once again to Perth and the WACA ground for our live coverage of Friday night Winfield Cup football and the clash between the Canberra Raiders and the Eastern Suburbs Roosters. Two teams well in contention, but Ray Warren, with the rep season now upon us, it always takes its toll. Can you bring us up to date with the problems that Canberra faced in the last couple of days? Yeah, well, the more recent uh, of their problems was yesterday at training. Uh, Laurie Daly was kicking the football and he tore a thigh muscle. Uh, the doctor said, look, you can play, but if you do, you risk being out for quite a good period of time, and that could include a state of origin so Daly's pulled out Matthew Wood comes in and of course uh, Gary Belcher pulled out earlier uh, that injury apparently was much more serious than the general public was led to believe there was a fear that he actually had cracked a vertebrae but that's been cleared apparently as of today so Boyle comes into the centres and Mullins goes back to full back that's the situation well with their loss and the players backing up from Monday night are you tipping an Eastern Suburbs win yeah I am Pete but um, it's hard to tip against Eastern Suburbs. Uh, sure, Canberra's had some very good wins, but East have been the quiet achievers, the unsung heroes, uh, and I think they'll get the money here tonight. Well, Paul Vaughton is obviously still in mourning after Queensland's loss on Monday night. He hasn't made the trek across the Nullarbor, but tonight we're joined by one of the true legends of the game, a man well entrenched in rugby league in Perth, Lord Ted Goodwin. Ted, thanks for joining us. You've been over here a couple of years. Can you tell us what the feeling is of the everyday person walking down the street about the entry in 95? Peter, the feeling's a buzz. It's, it's a huge buzz over here. You know, like I say, there's an addiction to football over here. Um, there is the Aussie rules, and we've got rugby league. People in the West love body contact sport. Now we're going to have a national rugby league side. The Western Reds is all a go, and it's a big buzz going on. How important have these games annually been to that build-up? Well, we've had 20,000 plus for the last two games. I, I say Parramatta have been here, Canberra have been here. The crowds love them. They know what rugby league's all about, and I'll be out in their force tonight to um, welcome Al Meninga and the Raiders back on the field. Well, I'm sure all rugby league supporters wish the Reds well in 95. But first things first, tonight it's Canberra up against Eastern Suburbs. Canberra played here twice before and have a 100% record. They've won on both occasions. Eastern Suburbs, a win tonight, will put them as outright leaders on the competition table. We'll now go to a break and be back with all the live action in tonight's coverage of Friday Night Football. And Craig Salvatore takes the Eastern Suburbs.
Western Suburbs in the first half. I've never seen a ground in such uh, good conditions. One thing the players will be worried about is landing on the middle of that cricket pitch at the Wacker. It's not a pleasure to land on, Ray. Well, you land more heavily than most blockers, so you should know. Graham Annesley is the man in charge of our Friday night football encounter. Eastern Suburbs versus Canberra should be a good game, and Mullins gives the ball away to Fritz to take it back on the first encounter between the attack and the defence. Meninga up to take a forward play. Very early in the game, I wonder will that be the norm for the night? This is Lomax. Well, he almost pushed players out of the way, Mal, to get involved there. And I think after backing up from Monday night, that's the best ploy, to get involved as quickly as possible, get into the flow of the game. Meninga obviously very keen to do that as the ball back to Stewart. Kicks on the short blind side. And Rod Silver allows the ball to bounce, takes it on the first. One of the excitement players of the game is Rod Silver, and he's brought down just 30 metres away from his own line. Stewart spent quite a bit of time out on the park uh, in training sessions over the last couple of days, just working out where the lines are going to be, and we went through that routine again prior to the match kicking off. This is O'Dwyer, a short pass up for Casato. He has his legs taken by David Ferner. Now he sweeps it back in the opposite direction for Salvatore, and he plonks it down the field towards Mullins, 10 out from his own line. Jeff Mullins along with Jason Taylor on the bench on Monday last and uh, neither of them got a run and as Phil Gould said that was the only disappointment that he experienced all night David Ferner 20 metres away from his own line through the hands of Stewart it's with uh, Pong here and this Eastern Suburbs defence has clicked into gear immediately they've had a fortnight's uh, break but it's proven practically impregnable for some sides as Stewart finds the line and he's picked it up hasn't he exactly where he left it on Monday night finding the line about 19 meters out from the eastern suburbs line it was very interesting at that dinner you were talking about earlier Ray with Tim Sheens made it very obvious that he wanted people to know that Ricky Stewart hasn't been troubled by a groin injury this season it's in fact a new injury a hip injury the, the hip flexor and we just wanted people to know that with the representative games coming up, it will be a fit Ricky Stewart available for further selection. Appleby it is that plays the ball. And Gaffey, a former Raider himself, he's been one of Eastern Suburbs' chief contributors, O'Dwyer, was able to make it out to the 30-metre line. I do fancy that uh, if Canberra can hold this Eastern Suburbs pack, that will take them more than halfway to victory here tonight. Short pass by Freeman on a wide blindside, finding his captain, Salvatore. They're 41 metres away from their own line. Opening minutes of Friday night football. And off the left foot, Jeff Orford. He puts a kick across the ground. It, it had a bit of danger written across it. Mullins is with it. There's no problem now. But uh, Casado wraps Mullins up. It was just a kick that was to vacant pasture. And it could have led to uh, a very heavy penalty for Eastern Suburbs, that is. Played by Sean Hoppy. Now Pongia angles back in behind the play of the ball. Steve Walters in at the acting half. And Stewart says, it's time for me again. He grubbers this kick down to Rod Silver. He gets an awkward bounce, uh, Silver, but put his eyes on the ball and made no mistake as he took it back towards the Canberra defence. Appleby taking it away again from Dummy Half. He's uh, played very well, Appleby. He can be a little bit enigmatic in a game. He can be hot one moment and cold the next, but when I think of rugby league's uh, enigmas, the black on the left, uh, he seemed to wear that title more than anybody. Of course, I'm talking about Lord Ted Goodwin. Freeman. <laughs> Comment from the sideline, Steve. Yeah, Ray Eastern Suburbs making it very easy for the Canberra defence. They're only running from dummy half in their own half. I think this is this sort of ground, the whacker, you can throw the football around a bit. Brett Mullins. And Mullins has gone into touch now. Will it be a penalty? No, it's going to be a scrum. Ennisley ordering the scrum just outside the 20 metre line. So that's a, a little break that Eastern Suburbs have been looking for, Ted. 
No, it's just a bad error there by Mullins, I thought, on the 20. He shouldn't have went out there. Stewart's kicking. He's kicked twice in the, um, inside the, from 10 metres from the sideline. Um, he, his kicking game is um, is going very well. But it's Eastern Suburbs under attack, and I've watched him. Right? Orford taking the play down within five metres of the line. Incisive run by Jeff Orford. Silver to dummy half. Brendan Hall is one of several troops on the blind, and they've absolutely walked through for a try. Brendan Hall has strolled through the Canberra defence on the blind side to score the easiest of tries. Well, it wasn't only on this play that they strolled through the Canberra defence, but Jeff Orford did the same thing the previous play to set up this chance for Brendan Hall to go across. And here you'll see it. Very easy. Great mate here. You see that... Boyle stayed on the outside and the defence on the inside really just no communication there at all between the two centres and that set up this try. Mal pushed off, did very well Brendan Hall but a softness about that. So four points to nil after five minutes to Eastern Suburbs and what looked like it was a very tight battle out there with both defensive lines unbreakable. Suddenly, Canberra has opened up so easily, Ted, as Brendan Hall now lines up this attempted conversion. Nine metres in from touch. 21 out. A slight breeze with him, according to Blocker. He's brought it around nicely, and the flags go up. Good kick by Brendan Hall. Eastern Suburbs leading Canberra. 6-0 in Friday Night Football try after just six minutes of this game scored by Brendan Hall and converted by the same player and this is only the third tackle on the first set of six following the kickoff Tassel wrapped up and put down 35 out from his own line on the sideline Steve Roach again well, the try was scored. Uh, Mal Meninga didn't come up in the line. And I was watching the Canberra Raiders warm up earlier, and Mal looked like he was stiff and sore. So uh, he, he didn't look like he was running freely. That's probably a, a thing from Monday night after the State of Origin. Played by Sean Hoppy. Steve made mention of the fact that Eastern Suburb is just running from dummy half. We don't expect anything different from that. They don't give anything away. The defence has been very strong here, taking Fritz on. Good tackle low there by Gaffey. They just play very... Good percentage football, and they lead by six. As Matthew Wood drills the ball in behind the defence, but Rod Silver in good position. Silver about five metres out from his own line as he starts his fresh attack for Eastern Suburbs. Freeman a dummy half, just simple stuff. But that's the normal in the modern day of rugby league with Cassano now tackled. And uh, Canberra found inside the five by referee Annesley, so the penalty 25 metres out from their own line just the one penalty this in fact is it Paul taking uh, the line kicks and that's a very very accurate kick finding it about eight meters into Canberra's area Tim Sheen's the Canberra coach he would be concerned about the ease with which that first try came Salvatore plays the ball. Away on the left for Freeman, then across the face of one, picking up Hall. Murray tries to go inside. He's brought down 30 metres out from the Canberra line. Freeman across, finds Casato, and he's wrapped up and pulled down. Casato has forced his uh, way into this top grade side, into the run on side, and this is Salvatore, 20 metres out from the line. Eastern Suburbs looking the far more dangerous of the two. Back from Lowry. I thought he was going to pass to Freeman, but he didn't. And now he'll be forced over the touchline. And another scrum will go down some 10 metres away from the Canberra line. Well, some good defence there from Canberra. Much more urgency in that. We've already seen a Canberra player taken over the sideline in Brett Mullins. But a tit for tat there with Lowry going over. Had one more tackle to go. We'd have seen Eastern Suburbs go to the air. They have a lot of success with that part of their game, the kicking game. Now Canberra feed the scrum. Ten out from their own line. And Nadruku, his first touch of the football. Oh. And he didn't have it for long. He certainly did not. But they were fortunate that the ball went backwards and it was cleaned up by David Ferner. He's 15 away from his own line. And it's out 
for Ponya to again take it back. Canberra on every set of six, at least one of the forwards. And most often two. They angle back into the marker area, hoping that they will split open and that there'll be a gap there. Walters is tackled, but Eastern Suburbs are inside the five. And uh, the penalty kick for touch from the centre of the ground by Ricky Stewart. It uh, requires a big kick, but he finds it easily. Eight metres into Eastern Suburbs area. Tap to be taken by Steve Walters. Fritz, very strong runner of the ball. He doesn't hold anything back. It's, uh, it's stop, and then he goes to full pace, and you know that you've tackled him. Lomax, a different style of player. He's brought down 25 out from the line. Very deep back line here, Canberra, and they go that way. Matthew Wood got Meninga inside. Good front on defence there. Rips his pants off and puts him to ground. Sato was the, the chief tackler. They keep coming to the right. Stewart away. Matthew Wood plugs it in behind. Canberra get a good bounce, but Silver goes high. Good work by Rod Silver. That could have been... Uh, Easily a Canberra try. Well, we've seen a knock on here, ruled by referee Annesley. Interesting to see whether I gather it was Apple be picking up from dummy half. I think it was There's Silver. Well, I, I, I didn't see a knock on there. I think Peter Sean Hoppy popped his hand in there, and we've seen the knock on. The referee missed that one. Well, we've got a, a speed for, for Canberra, so a great opportunity here for them to attack. Stewart with the long pass. Wood picks up Boyle playing in the number 40 jumper. The ball is squeezed out, picked up by Gaffey and cleaned up by Eastern Suburbs just out from their own line. So Canberra really had a golden opportunity there and it's been frittered away. Well, he's had an unha unhappy start to this game, David Boyle. I thought he was at fault in that first break made, which led to the try. On that occasion, really just surrendered possession very easily. Good work here from Brendan Hall, the try scorer, taking it 29 out from his own line with a good run. Now Gary Freeman looking to pick up men out wide, and they made a bus through Gaffey. Inside pass, picks up Freeman. Freeman, that's off the feet. That should be play on. Annesley, I don't know that he's seen it the same as I. He's played the advantage. Nat Ruka is with it for Canberra. Five metres on his own side of the halfway. Eastern Suburbs have got two players at least out of the line. They're getting back on side. A good chance to attack if they spread it wide. Stewart shows it but takes the tackle right on halfway. Casato leading the way in defence for Eastern Suburbs. Now Fritz, who's leading the way for the other forwards in the hit-ups. As I said earlier, leaving nothing at home. He takes it all up to them. Croker put down 11 into East Area. Jason playing at lock again tonight. He's been all over the park. He's done his job well, though, for coach Tim Sheens. Matthew Wood finds the line only about five metres away from the Eastern Suburbs try line. Nicely weighted kick. I don't know that he meant to go that close, though. Well, until that final tackle where they did spread a couple of passes, it was very noticeable the lack of support in this Canberra Raiders outfit. They're sending their player up, pretty much one out, nobody going, nobody showing the necessary respect. Unless they rectify that part of their game, they're not going to have a chance against Eastern Suburbs who defend very strongly when there's only one man bringing the ball forward. 2-2 two, two, the scrums of no significance really uh, with the four of them going along with the feed. Gaffey will play at centre of the park. These matches for Nigel Gaffey are games that he'd like to win, being a former Raider himself. Interesting to note, when they met last year, it was only in round 11. I mean, that's the only time they played last year. East beat Canberra by 24 points to 8. And since Canberra came into the league, they've played 22 times, and Canberra has beaten East 12-10. I submit to you that Canberra would have beaten a hell of a lot more opponents by a much wider margin than just two games. I wasn't aware that Eastern Suburbs have always offered a problem for Canberra, so it seems. And that'll again be the case tonight, Ray. Good touch finder there for Eastern Suburbs. Finds touch 12 metres out. 6-0 in favour of Eastern Suburbs, and we've got this scrum packing. 10 metres away from the Canberra line, Annesley did have something to say there to Quentin uh, Pongia. I'm not sure what it was about. Obviously an incident that occurred in back play that 
And as we waited for the first opportunity to come back and talk to him about Hoppy now. He's wrapped up. 12 out from his own line, uh, Steve Roach. Yeah, Quinton Pongia was called out for a high tackle on Gary Freeman. Gary Freeman ran off Jason Tassel and Pongia, his New Zealand uh, teammate, just caught him a bit high. How did it look? Uh, it looked pretty ordinary, actually. It was a bit high. Now, Ferner loses the ball when he gets up. Annesley doesn't worry about the fact that it was not a correct play, the ball. Uh, I think Annesley felt, well, it was raked out by East and he played the advantage. Stewart puts the deep kick down. Appleby goes back. He comes away off his own 20-metre line, runs away from Rod Silver, and then is wrapped up by Sean Hoppy. Scott Murray playing in the centres. He has played there quite often for Eastern Suburbs. Luke Rickardson is the player that East could well miss out there tonight. I know Peter's been... Peter's been a wrap for... Um, but Rickardson's defence this year in matches we've seen. Now, just looking at East getting a replacement ready on the sidelines, and we picked up a shot of Big Sal. I'm wondering whether he might be coming off shortly. Mullins comes away from his 20-metre line. He puts on an arc and gets away from Gary Freeman. Scott Murray does well. Head-on tackle. He's had a great start to this game. Scott Murray's defence has been outstanding. With the ball in his hands, he opens up something nice for his outside men. It was interesting to note that he did move into 5-8 for that last run. So East with the luxury of being able to move, move both Murray and Hall between the 5-8 and centre position. Pongia. So a good shot front on there from... That'll be Tassel, Tassel Pete. it is. Plays in the headgear and, my goodness, he's always been one of their better players, uh, Tassel. He, he like Casado. In fact, um, both these second rowers didn't look like making the top grade in the run on side at the start of the year, but... Here they are tonight for one of the big matches of the year for both clubs. This is Mark Prothero right on the halfway mark now to play the ball back to Jeff Orford. Jeff, uh, a winger, of course, but playing in the centres to fill this gap left by Luke Rickardson. Out and away for uh, Nigel Gaffey. Gaffey proving hard for the Raiders. He always is able to bring two and three into him. And sometimes that can leave you short on the outside. It can leave a gap like the one Freeman just ran through. Now he picks up Prothero on the extreme right. He gets away from Stewart. Mullins was able to pull him down long enough for Meninga to come in and secure. But there's a chance here for the, uh, the Roosters. Freeman. Prothero now. Round the corner ball. Orford got it away for Lowry. On for Rod Silver. Back it goes again now for O'Dwyer. He's very close to the line, pulled down, two metres out from the line. He's lost the ball, Canberra come up with it, and it took a great tackle from behind. Brett Mullins finally coming up with the ball, but razzle-dazzle stuff there from Eastern Suburbs, all but scoring, keeping the ball alive. Here's Rod Silver getting the ball away to O'Dwyer. Now he nearly spins out of this tackle to score. The ball knocked down by Lomax, and Mullins there to clean up. Well, if it was knocked down by Lomax, Offside. Peter, and I'm not disagreeing with you, it should have been a penalty to Eastern Suburbs. I don't think you're wrong, but it should have been a penalty to Eastern Suburbs if it was knocked down by Lomax. Annesley obviously didn't see it that way. He believes that O'Dwyer turned it up cold. Now, the clearing kick by Rick Stewart is taken by Silva, and he brings it out 40 metres and further, 45 metres. Canberra a couple of times on this right-hand side of the ground have been exposed. I'm not sure what the problem is. Now, Scott Murray, 10 metres into Canberra's area. Away from O'Dwyer, through the hands of Freeman, wide for Lowry. And Lowry's wrapped up without any gain in ground. They are in the centre of the park. Now Freeman again. Let's a decoy go inside, turns it outside. Uh, Gaffey is with it. He plays it 35 out on five. Freeman puts it in the air. It's not a bad bomb. Murray's coming fast. Mullins is under it. Mullins is safe. He comes away outside his 10 metre line, but only just. I don't know that Brett Mullins is running with no, he's a lot of freedom. There. Look at him, Pete. Yeah, he's, he's clutching up around the rib area. He's in some trouble out there. You can see he took that tackle very softly. Took the bomb well, got outside Murray's chase. This is where he hurts himself coming in and straight away clutching the side. This is Fritz. 
and leaving the field. Brett Mullins and number 15, Ken Nagus, going on as Lomax takes the ball outside his own 30. Well, another one of the Canberra big names is off the park. They started without Belcher, without Daly. Now they've lost Brett Mullins. And now they've lost the ball. A mistake made there, a handover. Salvatore playing it. 35 out. Eastern Suburbs have six tackles. Gaffey. Number four, Brett Mullins. 6-0 in favour of the, the tri-coloured side from Bondi. Played by Casato. Back for um, O'Dwyer. He got a shocking play of the ball. They've coughed it up, Eastern Suburbs. That's <laughs> about the cutout pass from Gary Freeman. Jason Tassel got his head in the road. And Nagus takes the ball out. One of the rare occasions where the pass doesn't find its mark from Gary Freeman. Strangely enough, is the Druku away? Yes, this is the Fijian import, and look at the speed. He's run away from two. He steps inside. Silver loses his footing. Silver oh. comes again. He oh. fends him off. Oh, Ned Druka. Oh, he's a Ratu. Oh, he's going to be a crowd pleaser for a long, long time. He's made an, an enormous impact, and there's the smile on Tim Sheen's face. Well, as good a smile as you're going to get in a game of football. And he did it all himself. Got outside his man. And that's plenty to do. Peter Cutler plays the big step inside Silver. Let's have a look at the lead-up play. Lomax bumps out of Gaffey's tackle. Good quick hands from Meninga. Well taken by Nadruka and just too much pace. I don't know why Prothero was in there. But he was, and look at this um, former Fijian rugby international. Noah Nadruka, the big chief from Fiji. Bring back some memories, this one, Ted. Well, yes, um... <laughs> what, what can I say? He, he's an exciting player. He's running down the sideline. But like Ray, you said, Prothero, why did he go in there? And look at the big step. He, he, he falls over here. Now, watch his fend. He's got a long arm here. He just pushes off Hall. Oh, Silver, sorry. And he just over a try. Like you said, Ray, the crowd are going to love this man. Are they what? I'm not real wrapped in the way he put it down, but never mind. The four points are on the board. Tim Sheens is happy. Canberra's happy. And Noah Nadruka scores yet another try in the Winfield Cup. He could prove to be one of the buyers of the season. David Ferner is 22 metres out. 10 metres in. His side trailing 6-4. Chance to equalise. Breeze fractionally against Canberra. It's across the face, no goal, no charge in score. Eastern Suburbs lead by two in Friday Night Football. And back here at the WACA ground in Perth, that's where we're telecasting this match tonight. Across Australia on the Nine Network. Eastern Suburbs leading Canberra, six points to four. In that last passage, we saw Brett Mullins injured. What's the story, Steve Roach? Yeah, Brett Mullins has got a bit of a rib cartilage injury and, and coach Tim Sheens is desperate to get him back onto the field. Well, not easy things to come back from. Very painful rib cartilage injuries. But that's exactly what Canberra needed. They needed an individual effort to spark them. Eastern Suburbs look to be getting on top. They certainly were on the scoreboard. Now there's just a bit more of a spring in the step of these Canberra players. The support players noticeably better. The ball back to Stewart. Well, a bad pass. Just giving them a wrap and they've come up with a mistake. Stewart should get a kick away here. And he doesn't. Keeps it alive to Meninga. Meninga again using Nadruka, who really torpedoes a pass across half of the ground almost. They're out on the 30-metre line, and Stewart is now going to get the kick in. It'll uh, bounce up favourably for Rod Silva. 20 metres away from his own line. Good chase by Canberra, good defence. Gaffey using Appleby. Midway between the 20 and the halfway. Prothero. Six four, Eastern Suburbs. Soft try for Brendan Hall, converted by him and just a few minutes ago. For those that may have just joined us, the Fijian International Union player, Noah Nadruka, a 70 metre try. David Ferner failed to convert as Freeman Puts the kick down to Madruka's wing now. That's the corner that he's guarding. Prothero on Madruka. He tries to stand him up, but he ran slap bang into Jeff Orford. And 
defender, he'll play it 15 out from his own line. I don't think anybody doubts the attacking ability of the Fijians. We've seen them in the Nissan and then the Coca-Cola 7s. And uh, there is no question about their ability to attack. 25 out from their own line. Canberra trailing by two then. The Stewart unloads for Lomax to be tackled around the legs by Brendan Hall. Walters comes out when there's no markers. Lomax was asked to stay alive after playing the ball. He nearly went to sleep. But the Kiwi plays at 40 metres out. A shocking pass from Pongia. Stewart's able to get his kick in, however. And uh, it'll be brought back because it wasn't going to find touch. And Mark Prothero comes across the ground, looks to pass and does. And Rod Silva away from uh, Nadruka and away from Nagus. And eventually Fritz it is that wraps him up just short of the halfway mark. Great run there from Silva. Great broken field runner. Houston Suburbs now take the ball inside the Canberra half. But a couple of the Canberra players now starting to rise to the occasion. Steve Waller's dummy half work has been very good. Canberra now found inside the five metres. Penalty centre field, a quick tap. Attempted by Casado, but he thinks better of it. Fritz has played well for mine too. Ray, he, a player that Paul Vorton and myself have discussed as maybe a chance of making the next Queensland State of Origin side. Maybe he needs to make a few more charges, but the ones he have made have been quality ones. Brendan Hall then, finding the line. 20 metres out. Chance here for the Samsung Eastern Suburbs side. Appleby decides to pass on the first. It really wasn't necessary. O'Dwyer plays it. Now Freeman, wide for Tassel, runs into a shoulder charge from Pong here. It's a dangerous place to be trying shoulder charges if they miss. Freeman runs across from the right to the left and picks up Gaffey. Eastern Suburbs still with a couple of tackles. Salvatore held up and forced back. A metre from the line. Dummy half, Scott Murray. Freeman's calling for it to the right, obviously. Now for Tassel. Tassel's wrapped up by Pong here. This is their last. Odewire for Freeman. Freeman then for Hall. It may have got a touch from Canberra. Nagus is with it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Two metres out from his own line. Enormous pressure there for Canberra. They did well to clean it up in the end. As I think it's Madruka who picked up and dumped unceremoniously. Kicked out there. The rest will see which way the penalty goes. Well, it goes the Canberra Raiders' way. Orford not happy with the decision. Annesley well, having a few words with Jeff Orford. Annesley telling Nadruka to get away and get back with the football. I'm not sure what Orford did here. He got up and appealed to the referee as if to say, what about what he did to me? Let's have a look at it. Well, he's appealing that Madruka kicked out, which yeah. he did do. And kicked out on two occasions, so a little bit lucky there, the Fijian. Penalty, nevertheless, goes to Canberra. And uh, the tap to be taken 20 metres out from their own line. Here's Lomax. Walters. Pongi. Ferner now. Sato the tackler. They're on the 40 metre line. Stewart. Appleby not reading the fact that he's playing against a fellow by the name of Ricky Stewart all that well. He gave himself a 40 metre run almost to go back and pick it up. He probably should have been thinking about falling back a little bit earlier, but then again, I suppose we've got to be fair to him. Stewart could put the long ball on and he could have a winger down the sideline. I wouldn't be surprised to see Stewart put the short ball on either race. Rod Silver at fullback, a time standing 60, 70 metres back behind the straight line of defence for Eastern Suburbs, just begging for the little one to be put over with a good chase. I saw Salvatore in a bit of trouble just a few moments ago. He could be having problem, I think, with a, a knee or ankle. Uh, right leg. He's uh, been doing some hobbling around. He's trying to get some... Um, some action going there for that right leg of his. Now this is Nagus, and he's able to beat one. He beat him easily down the sideline. He's towing a player along. It was Brendan Hall. Scott Murray's been hurt. Scott Murray's in terrible pain. Leg injury. He's come off the field quickly. Meninga. Meninga's 40 metres out from the line. Eastern Suburbs. 
They've got two players out of the line, both injured. There's one further back down the ground. It's Appleby. Yes, he was the man beaten. as a penalty awarded to Canberra here. Beaten very easily by Nagus. Penalty for holding down. And there you see Scott Murray, is it? All this is Scott stuff. Murray hurt here. But further back down the park, they've called the chief trainer up to have a look at Appleby. Meantime, Canberra, they realise that Eastern Suburbs are on the ropes. It's only a matter of knocking them out. Fritz takes it up to the 10-metre line. Away to Ricky Stewart. Over for Matthew Wood. Inside ball for Jason Croker. 15 metres from the Eastern Suburbs line. Stewart again. And Matthew Wood again. Dummy to Meninga. Now they go for the line. David Boyle gets it out for Nagus. And Nagus picks up a try. It really had to happen. Yes, they're in all sorts of trouble, Eastern Suburbs. They got one player out there in 26, Steve Deacon, but they were still short of numbers. And there you see Appleby bleeding profusely up around the nose area while the try scorer comes back. Nagus puts his side in front, and this is how it happened. Stewart finds Matthew Wood. Now, the inside dummy there, and we see the, the, the player in the headgear making the mistake. Ball over the top, well taken by Ken Nagus, and that's a typical backline movement from this Canberra team. As you've seen, it goes out to Woody, he dummies once, goes again, brings it back inside, and he throws a lovely little lob pass out to Nagus, and these chaps, they know how to score tries, and they love scoring tries. Ken Nagus, one of the replacements, uh, he's on there for Brett Mullins, he picks up the try, and Canberra... They grab the lead for the first time in the game. And he'll see the, the mistake made by Jason Tassel. As we freeze the play there, there's the player in the headgear, partly obscured, as play continues, and he allowed the gap. Desperate attempt there by Casado to no avail. The try scored. Ferner, a difficult conversion from out wide. Handy piece of work in there by David Boyle. Young Ferner from the sideline. Suburbs 10 6. To Perth uh, for this Friday night match between Canberra and Eastern Suburbs. This is the first tackle. Just saw the tail end of the uh, the kickoff, so you're not missing very much by the fact that we're coming to you live tonight. And just a few commercials during the night. Pongia. 10 6 in favour of the Raiders. And. Uh, Noah Madruka and Ken Nagus have been over for the Canberra side. Brendan Hall for Eastern Suburbs, but Canberra with two tries to one, leading 10 to 6. Steve Roach, some problems there for Eastern Suburbs. Any reports on the guys that have come off? Yeah, Appleby's got a bit of a smashed nose. That was bad luck for uh, for Eastern Suburbs. He was on the field of play, now, and the trainers were trying to get the attention of the referee. That means that Eastern Suburbs were one down, so they only had 12 players to defend their line. That's when Canberra scored. Well, I actually saw the 25 Shane Walker try and go on and was called back, so that was the reason. Yeah, he was on for Murray. This is Gaffey. He made a bit of a smashed nose. Brother Rowe. Yeah, what do you mean a bit of a smashed nose? Well, Smash, mate. <laughs> it's a family TV show, isn't it? Have you got any compassion at all? O'Dwyer playing the ball right on halfway. Freeman across for Lau. There's a few Kiwis out there tonight. I'll give you the tip. Casado. Got a real international flavour about it. This one. Fijians, New Zealanders. Islanders. Salvatore, that's a good kick by Salvatore. Oh, gee, that was close. Great work from Ricky Stewart. Came up with a try saver on Shane Walker. Beautiful kick in behind. And the referee conferring with the, the touch judge has found a penalty. That's a high tackle. Yeah, Stewart told to keep the ball down, uh, the, the tackle down. Well, he, gee, he just had to put his body on the line, Ricky Stewart, here. And that's what he did. Let's have a look. Oh, gee, it was a feeling high one, wasn't it? That is Shane Walker, incidentally, yeah. on in 25 for Eastern Suburbs. Still taking stock of what they've done since the injuries. O'Dwyer. Tassel at dummy half. 
Lowry calling him around, but uh, Lowry has held up himself. Five metres from the line. O'Dwyer finding Freeman. He spe uh, spears it out for Casato. Now Orford tries to go back in field. They're five metres out from the line, the Roosters. Casato sweeps it to the blind side for Salvatore. Did I hear yeah. Salvatore groaning with pain? Certainly did. Look like his leg just gave way. You see that the smash on the ground there. He knows he's done something. Probably a knee, one would imagine. Well, Mel Meninga oh. is just as concerned as anybody. Well, it's an ankle or a knee. One of the joints gone there, and Salvatore will... We heard the, the scream in pain. And even now, Salvatore very upset. I don't just think it's the pain there. I think he knows that this might be something that will keep him out of football for a little while. Let's hope that's not the case. A magnificent season. For the stretcher there. Well, Big Mal, he was on the scene when it happened and uh, he immediately tried to uh, lend assistance to Salvatore, but there was little that he can do. But a mark of sportsmanship again from the Australian captain. Yeah, well, nobody likes to see this happen, especially to a, a nice guy like Salvatore. That's where he did it, Pete. He did it one stride before he reached the defence. He put an awkward stride in. Yeah, and trying to prop back there. Straight away, his reaction, as I say, I don't think it was all in pain. I think he, he understood straight away that there was something fairly seriously done. That's a tragedy, not only for eastern suburbs, but Salvatore, he really prided that uh, New South Wales jumper. As I say, let's hope when he cools down, it, it, it's not going to be too serious. James Smith in 53 will be the replacement player coming on. We're into the last two or three minutes of this first half. Eastern Suburbs trailing on the scoreboard. One Salvatore leaves the field. They are going to have a final shot here. Or danger time and a generous round of applause from this crowd that's continued to build during this first half as Salvatore leaves the field. Eastern Suburbs with a very, very deep and wide back line. Canberra, of course, have had time now to set their defensive line. They lead 10-6, the Raiders. We're coming up towards half-time. Freeman away for Brendan Hall. He tries to get the grubber in behind the defence. Sean Hoppy was half waiting for it. It wasn't a bad idea there, Ray. Just that the kick didn't come off the boot the way that he wanted to. It was a very straight line defence from Canberra. He would have been kicking into open spaces. It was closed down nicely, and now you think Canberra would just... Close up this first half. They've built up a good lead. A bit scratchy early on, but they've done the right thing and got the game in order. This is Lomax. Wrapped up and put away on his 30-metre line. David Furner. Stewart. Has to dance his way around the defence, and the defence is rewarded for uh, persistence. Steve Deacon it was that made the tackle on uh, Ricky Stewart, forcing the turnover 32 metres away from the Canberra line. We're almost on halfway, so Eastern Suburbs with this final opportunity before the break. Lowry playing it back to O'Dwyer, 27 metres out from the line. This is uh, Brendan Hall, I believe. In fact, it was Gappy. Now across for Freeman. This is Smith. James Smith. 15 metres out. Still a couple of tackles remaining. Steve Deacon. That's, that's number five now. To the blind for Freeman. Puts the grubber in, but it goes across the touchline. Uh, in goal, so it'll come out. Well, it's been touched, Ray. The, the referee, as he runs back under the post there, has ruled that Canberra somehow touched it. Nobody played at it, but it's hit someone on the way through. Gary Freeman knew that. He was pointing. Well, I was watching Martin Weeks, the man with the flag. He waved it out, and he pointed to the referee to go back to the 22. There he is waving his flag. We probably won't see it on that shot. Yeah, well, the referee's ruled that David Boyle was the man who was hit by the ball going through his legs. So a final shot again for Eastern Suburbs. Probably won't have time to get through this set of six. It's a big drop kick by Ricky Stewart. Silver 
hands it back to Tony Casado, and Casado makes a fine run. At 25 metres out from the line, O'Dwyer for the right to Tassel. Tassel reaches the 20. Wood makes the tackle with Lomax. O'Dwyer now to Freeman. This is Brendan Hall. A baseball over for Caffey. Caffey very hard to stop from this distance out. Two metres from the line. Dummy half. Walker it goes across again to Brendan Hall. And he's put down and put away. Eight metres out from the line. They're in the centre of the park, though. Danger for Canberra. Fritz does well, takes the attack to the ground, holds it down for a while. Now Freeman tries to put the kick in. It came off the legs of Walters. No knock on against Canberra. And Canberra will safely ruck it away from their own line and take it to the half-time break, one would think. David Ferner plays it. A little bit of time being added on here. We have had some injuries in this first half as Nadruku tries to go straight ahead. Can't beat the tackle. Canberra with a four-point lead. Not looking to do anything silly here. Ricky Stewart again calling the play, bringing Lomax off his shoulder as the siren sounds. They keep it alive. Walters getting it across the back for Stewart. Never say die as far as Canberra's concerned, even if the siren has gone. And uh, it was up to Eastern Suburbs to clean it up and put it over the line. That's the end of the first half. And Canberra goes... The promotion undertaken by the New South Wales Rugby League in bringing Winfield Cup football to the West. As we welcome you back to the Wacker ground, the people of Perth have really come out again to support Rugby League over here and have seen a very impressive first 40 minutes of football. Ted Goodwin, Canberra leading 10 points to 6, but early on, Eastern Suburbs, it looked to be one-way traffic. Canberra have hit back. Well, Pete, the game's been played in two halves. We've had um, Eastern Suburbs come out in the first period there, and we've seen um, pretty slack defence. It looked like Walters, um, Stewart and Meninga were feeling the effects of the state of origin. They looked very sluggish early as uh, East applied the pressure and come up with the first try by Brendan Hall. Well, that was very evident. Some ordinary defence here leading up to this particular play. And there we see Mal Meninga coming up with a missed tackle. Brett Mullins coming up quickly out of the line. That was early in the game. And a great start from, for Eastern Suburbs, but you can never write off this Canberra team. They hit back and they did it in style, a magnificent individual effort from one of the most exciting players we've seen. He's going to be a crowd pleaser, this man, isn't he? Oh, he is, certainly. They went wide from this pass, had the cut-out pass there. But, but the winger, Brothero, he, 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 he come off the line and have a look at this man go. He can run. Brendan Hall just didn't have the pace for it. There's Brendan Hall, didn't have the pace. And here he comes, he'll take the big uh, left foot step goes inside, falls over, and now Silver comes back again, but the big palm off. An exciting Fijian player and a great excitement player. There's some criticism that in our game we have too many robots. Do you believe that we have enough match winners and exciting players as Noah Nadruku? Um, I think there is uh, quite a few players around that can play um, exciting style football, but uh, whether they're allowed to or not, I, I think this is the big thing. Are they allowed to play um, exciting football? Can they go past the, the coaches' um, predictions and things like this, Pete? Well, Canberra certainly can, and again, they scored a, a typical Canberra try to take the lead. A good backline movement, some poor defence here from, from Eastern Suburbs, but Canberra... Great at keeping the ball alive, Ted. Yeah, as we see there, it was poor defence. Um, they had they had a couple of players off injured here. They, Ricky Stewart seen it, sent the ball out wide to Wood. We had the inside pass come back in, and Ken Nagus finished off it in brilliant style. Well, leading Canberra, 10 points to 6 over East and Suburbs. A fair bit of work for East to do, especially losing Craig Salvatore, which may be for the rest of this game. But tomorrow morning, our Commonwealth Bank Cup coverage continues. And this match between St John's Park High up against Westfield Sports High. That's at 6.30am tomorrow. And from this particular game, we've chosen this as our Coca-Cola Play of the Week. What about Mamaliti coming down the sideline here, stepping inside and beating three defenders with a blade of glass, glass to work on as they've won another one against the feed. They surely must score. Fair claw away from Mamaliti. Sterling just mentioned him. He chimed in beautifully. Mamaliti goes to the wing in this game. He picks up try number one. Here it is, Peter Sterling, take us through it. It just shows how important a win against the feed is these days. Good dummy there thrown by McHenry, and the number three, Sue, came in for St John's Park when he needed to stay out. Again, some great action from the Commonwealth Bank Cup, and we do thank Coca-Cola for their support of Junior Rugby League. Plenty of sport once again coming up this weekend, and the sport just continues on the wide world of sports. Let's have a look at what is in store this weekend. There, that Eastern Suburbs have held the ball for six tackles more. That is a little bit misleading, because early in this game, Canberra did kick the ball a lot early in the tackle count. 
It's only a, a half played in two halves. Line breaks the same three all tackles very much the same. Miss tackles, that's not a bad count for either side. I'll be a little bit surprised in the bottom statistic. Canberra with the way they throw the ball around to only come up with two handling errors. It's sensational ball control. Eastern Suburbs have come up with five, so not much between them. And that's shown on the scoreboard. This game really could go either way. I'm just talking about those injuries and we'll get Steve Roach to give us a report on, on Craig Salvatore. That was Salvatore's incident. He tried to step, it seemed, off his right leg and uh, it uh, just gave way completely on him. Now, this was Nagus, attempted tackle by Appleby oh, and he wears, he wears the shoe uh, straight up the middle of the face and it's, it's opened his nose up completely. And that fellow, Scott Murray, he, he damaged his left knee in trying to tackle um, the runaway Nagus at the same time. It was only about two plays after that and Canberra were able to go in and score. Players back on the field. Plenty of half-time entertainment has been cleared from the ground now. And Steve, what's the story on Craig Salvatore firstly? Well, the, the Eastern Suburbs room resembles a war zone. Craig Salvatore, it's very hard to tell at the moment. Uh, the doctor said it'll take a couple of hours, if not tomorrow morning, to realise what's wrong because there's plenty of swelling in their knees. But Craig assures me that, he, that he's feeling fine and, and everyone at home don't worry, you know. It's just got a bit of a knee injury. I'll go on to Michael Appleby. He's, uh, he's got a broken cheekbone and a broken nose. Broken cheekbone? Yes, he has. And Steve Deacon, uh, they were putting a needle into his groin at, at half time and he'll have an operation next week so the eastern suburbs side as i said i don't know if they'll have enough to finish this game in the canberra room mullins looks like he will come back on he has a rib injury gee that's a shocking injury well, well there's there's brett you know, mullins, brett mullins i know what you're saying shocking injury for Appleby. yeah it's like he's, he's gone up he's come up with the missed tackle and unfortunately copped the boot which can happen in this game it doesn't happen that often but uh gee did a good job on it there you hardly expect to come out of it with a broken cheekbone. Something that came up on camera is quite a, a simple thing. But that's the story on Appleby. As Freeman now sends the ball down. Bouncing badly for Canberra, but eventually it's in the hands of Ken Magus. One of the two try scorers. And he's brought down about 42 metres out from his own line. Nadruka coming off the left wing, folding in to take uh, the first play or the first receiver job. Walters, and this is Pongi, who's been fairly busy for Canberra. He hasn't necessarily broken the line, but he's been a willing worker. Stewart kicks for himself. That's a good, uh, a good take there by James Smith. Yeah, he did well there, James Smith. I was talking to Jack Gibson about James Smith a couple of weeks ago. He's got an enormous rap on the kid. He said he does lack a bit of mobility. He's actually fairly deceptive in his pace. He, he is slower than he looks. He does a good job when he comes on for Eastern Suburbs. And Gibson, certainly a Gibson-type player. Good work rate. And he's done well since coming out there. That was a great take there to diffuse a little chip over the top from Stewart. Casada. This is really a back-to-the-wall effort for Eastern Suburbs now. Did Casado play that ball correctly is the question. As Freeman puts it in the air, not a good kick by the... Uh, the Eastern Suburbs half, who would be the captain of the side now. Silva passing it back and uh, kicked down the ground by, by Steve Deacon. Nagus coming away from that corner and outside the 10-metre line is pulled down and tackled, however, by Walker. Replacements galore on the park. Um, East have only got the one left as far as I can establish. It'll be Tim Russell. have all been used and used quite extensively. And the boys are getting a little bit excited out there at the moment. Tony Casado certainly not happy with proceedings. Gary Freeman having a few words to say to Graham Annesley, but then again, that's nothing new. Just waiting for the ball to come back. To the point of the scrum, 12 metres out from the Canberra line. And Eastern Suburbs do like putting on plays here. The lock normally gets involved. Well, you picked it right there. Gaffey it is that runs to the right. Freeman goes for the line. He's pulled down two metres out. Played back and away. Casado's with it. Casado swallows up a play. 
Odewire. Again, a suspect play the ball there, but they keep it alive, East. Freeman gets a wide pass away for Brendan Hall. He's five metres out from the line. Look at Ricky Stewart screaming to players on the ground to get up and get in the line. Freeman to play it. Seven metres out from the line. There's a Canberra player, David Ferner. He can't get in the line. Gaffey tries to break through. He's pulled down on five. Eastern Suburbs now with Orford. Tries to get a kick in. Ricky Stewart's everywhere again tonight. And he cleans up a couple of metres out from his line. Some very important tackles made in that set of six. Mel Meninga coming in on one occasion. If he hadn't have come up with the tackle, it was try time. He did, and he's come up with a very good charge there of five or six metres to centre field. He's taking a bit of pressure off his teammates as the Stu Wallace takes outside the 20. Just looking at David Ferner, he's received some attention. He's back on his feet. There's a great picture there, though, of uh, Stewart screaming at Ferner, who was down. There's little doubt what Stewart was saying. Get up and get in the line. Let's worry about the injury later, but David... He was non compass He lost that ball there, Pongia. Brendan Hall appealing, but Ricky Stewart gets the book, the kick away on the last tackle. Sits up once again for Rod Silver. On the second bounce. Tackler is Croker. Freeman the dummy half. Provero goes around David Ferner. Sean Hoppy brings him down. Ten metres into Canberra's territory. Fresh men coming on all over the place in this match. Good shot from Lomax there. Run on defence as Casado hits it up again straight on the fringe of the ruck. He's had a good game again, Tony Casado. He's right on the 30 metre line. O'Dwyer, Freeman. Freeman puts the kick in. He chases, but Nagus is there. Freeman's the first player there. Cuts his legs from underneath him. Stewart tries to come away, but Freeman's around his legs, so it was seven on seven. They don't see too much of each other in a, a game of rugby league. That time they came eyeball to eyeball. This is Matthew Wood. Walters turns it inside. Fritz comes back on that angled run, back towards the markers. Big man Fritz runs powerfully, but Stewart... He's in his favourite role, he's the conductor. He's got the baton and he's telling them what to do, guiding them round the park. Silver plays it now, 30 metres out from his own line. And an excellent chase here from the Canberra Chasers, led by David Boyle. Good front on tackle on Rod Silver and then came up with a second tackle. Fell asleep at, at marker there. And you know, Dwyer takes a few pretty cheap yards. Let's take a sideline comment from Steve. Well, when Canberra got the football, they're playing right into the Eastern Suburbs' hands. They're running right next to the ruck. And Eastern Suburbs markers are the best in the business. Freeman had to stop and go back for a bad pass. Tassel is wrapped up. They're 10 metres into uh, the enemy territory. Five tackles are gone. Oh, Dwyer's bomb is not a bad one. Nagus goes up for it. He got good protection, though, uh, particularly from Meninga. Jim Smith was going through, looking at the ball all the time and ran straight into the back of Mel Meninga. Ricky Stewart again, you can see he's lifted his performance, trying to drive these players. So too Meninga, getting involved. Paul Osmond getting ready to come on. Canberra have yet to use three of their uh, replacements. Well, a little bit of a scrap in the back there. Lomax and Steve Deacon, I think, would have a set two. Walker's on a long run, but he'll be beaten to the line, so the scrum will go down about eight metres out, but a touch judge will probably come on here and make a report. Well, let's hope not. There was nothing in it. Ricky Stewart, why wouldn't he be exhausted? Not with a big performance. You'll see in the background that the decoy player, the top right of screen, was taken out by the number 26. That's Steve Deacon. Steve Deacon. Deacon and Lomax are the two, but as Peter said, there was nothing in it, but what is happening at the moment is mandatory, but nobody seems to be too serious about it. Ricky Stewart and uh, Graham Annesley having quite a chat. It just seems to be all uh, a repeat of the first half. It's been all Eastern Suburbs for the for four sets of sixes, and, and Canberra's defence has been tremendous. They just don't seem to be getting over the line like they did in the first half, Eastern Suburbs, and um, a, a bit more ball, and Canberra just could come back, come back in the second period in the second half. The 
Hughes is Tassel. 20 metres out. Jason Deeth is coming on. David Ferner to come off. O'Dwyer did some good work there to get a pass away. Only 10-6 down our eastern suburbs, but it's going to really take a top effort to get out and win this one against what looks like a very committed Canberra defence and a, co a committed Canberra side. Now, Jason, scrum will go down, Brendan Hall losing the ball in the tackle. Yeah, Jason Craig, a very committed in his defence here, picking up Hall, who was looking for support to keep it alive. Copy pull driving tackle, forces the ball loose. 6-3, the scrums to eastern suburbs, which means they've fed the ball six times to three. Meninga brought down 20 metres away from the eastern suburbs line. Matthew Wood, a dummy half, Stewart on the right, nice passing, Lomax finding Nagus. That was a good tackle out there, wide, uh, made by Walker. Lomax plays it, there's still 20 out, Meninga goes the blind, Nagus combines out there with Hoppy, Nagus is back with the ball, and he goes for the line, the referee looks at the touch judge, it'll be a try, it is, Canberra's third try of the night. And great work from this replacement player, Nagus' second try, and he was involved from the start. Mal Meninga gets a good ball. Look at this for quick hands. Great ball to Sean Hoppy. He's stayed alive, Nagus, and he still had plenty to do. Got outside Smith, went straight through Silver, and he took the, the pole over with him, but the touch judge in good spot there. It looked very nice from front on. Great work again. Well, this is the first time Canberra have come up with a set of six inside Eastern Suburbs territory, and look what's happened. Nagus goes in for his second try, and like I say again, these guys love scoring tries, and um, they'll do me. If I had a team, they'd be in my team. I love tries. Well, a questioning look there from Rod Silver, waiting to see whether, in fact, the try scorer had kicked the corner post before planting the ball down. And you probably won't get a harder conversion attempt from this. Gary Freeman laying the law down to his side. They must hit back straight away. From the sideline there. 25 out. David Ferner will be replaced after this kick. Jason Deeth still on the sidelines waiting for him. As the ball leaves the boot, it's offline, so no change. But Canberra increasing their advantage to four out of play. This is the second. Quentin Pongia brought down. Canberra leading by 14 points to six. With three tries to one now. Two of them scored by replacement Ken Nagus. The other by the Fijian import Noah Madruka. Jason Deeth has come on to replace David Ferner. He was injured well, probably about eight minutes back now. Osborne is on. Stewart kicks down the ground. The ball looked to be going for the sideline, but then turned back in ground. And Prothero forced to take it back for the, uh, the eastern suburb side. And eventually he's wrapped up and put away by Jason Croker. David Ferner off the field now. A long walk from where he attempted the conversion right in front of the printable stand. And he's just arriving back at the bench now. But the penalty has gone to Eastern Suburbs. Right, they seem to be um, attacking Sean Hoppy's wing. I'd be attacking Sean Hoppy's wing because he leaves about 20 metres in from the sideline. But they, they sort of, they crab and they go across Canberra. Now, what, what Brendan Hall uh, was looking for in that last tackle, uh, that last set of six, before he lost the ball and Canberra scored, was they needed an inside runner out there. And Salvatore was doing that in the first half, but he's missing. Maguire. Lord Ted Goodwin joining us in commentary tonight. And great to have him on board this year. With, as uh, Peter pointed out earlier, Paul Vorton still recovering from Queensland's loss on Monday night. You can say it, Ray Sultan. That's what he's doing. Gaffy. It's not a bad nickname, is it? Lord. It's better than Sterlow and Rapids. <laughs> yeah, I can handle it, guys. This is Smith. Eastern Suburbs prepared to try anything now. They're looking to squeeze passes. Freeman tries to hold them away, but now he plays the ball. 
Ode Wire, 30 metres out, gets the kick off the left foot. Not a bad bomb from this kid. He can get a good kick away from Dummy Half. Here's a chance. Orphan. Oh, Nadruka knocked it down. Referee looks for a ruling from his touch, Judge. Well, Nadruka, that it could be the play of the game, believe me. Well, it was a timely knockdown because it was going to be a try. The good kick put up and the, and the chase. Nagus has flown way too early and a long way away. It's hit Osborne on the head. It's bounced into Jeff Orford's hands. And there's the Druka. He knew exactly what he was doing. Eastern Suburbs scrum win. It still mightn't be too late for the Roosters to put points on the board. Orford tries to make the break. Boyle closes the gap together with Nagus. From dummy half it goes away and back inside for Tony Casado. 15 out from the line, Casado. Wrapped up and put down by Paul Osborne. O'Dwyer finds Lowry. Lowry, he makes some ground, takes the tackle, gets it away for Casado. He's five metres out from the line. Now where's Freeman? He's on the left. He wants it. Here he is. Freeman holds it back, pops the dummy. Smith has got it. Now Silver. Silver tries to make the break, but there's no holes there in the camera defence yet. O'Dwyer runs to the blind, picks up Steve Deacon. Deacon's held. Five metres out. Tackle number five. Canberra's defence, great. Up to this point in time. Freeman tries to go over the top this time. Orford rakes it back and away. Brendan Hall puts it on the inside. And Eastern Suburb put the ball down. And here's trouble. Here's this flying machine going down the ground. Ned Ruka. What about the one-hand pickup on the run? Sensation. They go wide again. Meninga gets a one-handed to Osborne. Back into the centre for Jason D. Through a fragile tackle, he only needed support on the right, and they were under the bar. Canberra throwing it about now, showing Eastern Suburbs what they can really do. Stewart, Stewart steps, gets inside, gives it to Ned Ruka. Oh. It's a forward pass. Annesley was right on the spot. Stewart knew it. Forward pass was well, deliberate. Oh, he looked like well, he was in front. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. They, yeah. they won't use that penalty, Ted, but you're quite right. It's there, but they don't use it very often. But Annesley was spot on, and Ricky Stewart, no argument from him. He knew straight away, he knew straight away that he'd thrown the ball forward. Protherow showed great speed to round up Ned Ruka in the early uh, part of that great run down the ground. I thought Ned Ruka would just show them a clean pair, but... Brother wrapped him up very quickly. It was some exciting action. Just have a look at this pickup from Nadruka. Left hand, one hand, away he goes. Didn't, didn't lose any speed at all. Look at the speed shown by Brother though. If you think Nadruka can run, Brother picked him up real quick. This is Tassel. He's through a gap. He's got 40 to go. Full back to beat. Support coming. Now they take it inside the quarter. But it's broken down. Covered over there by Brendan Hall. O'Dwyer is down there, the number nine. They've got big numbers to the right. It's the last tackle. I think they'd run the football. Freeman does. It's with Lowry. Lowry goes towards the uprights. A basketball one-hander through James Smith. Out to Casado. Flicks it back. And Gaffey. Gaffey gets the try. What a pass by Casado. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, link of the field stuff here. We've seen Cameron Hilly score a try. Nigel Gaffey won't be out there too much longer. He'll be in the blood bin, but he'll be there as a try scorer. Mal couldn't do anything about it. They just didn't have the numbers, even though they scrambled nicely. Great ball from Tony Casado, and so was this one from Jason Lowry. The Statue of Liberty play. Finds Smith. He keeps the ball alive to Casado. Now, he's got a couple of men outside, but he decides to do it himself. Knew it was the last tackle. Nagus misses the intercept. And Gaffey improves the position a little bit. Great hit back from Eastern Suburbs. Great try. Hasn't it been a great passage of the game, though, Ted? We've been up one end of the park, then the other, then the other. Well, this is what the fans like. They love attacking football, and here it is here. I see the uh, Casado here. He, he, he knew. He knew from the last attack, uh, attack that um, the winger would go, would go with his winger. He didn't try to throw it. He held the ball, threw a brilliant pass inside at Nagus. Missed the ball, went for the ball. I thought he should have went for the man. But it's brilliant football at the moment. Great stuff to watch. Second try of the year for Nigel Gaffey. And Eastern Suburbs right back in this. 
This would be handy for Brendan Hall. Down 14 to 10, he's missed it. No alteration to that scoreline then. Canberra leading East by four. The end of it. And I think uh, that's young Russell that's out there now for Eastern Suburbs. Yes, it is. Now, who has he come on to replace in that Eastern Suburbs side? We'll work that out. Well, he'd have come on for Nigel Gaffey in some form. Steve Roach, have you got some information about that fairly nasty cut? Yeah, it is. Nigel Gaffey. Uh, yeah, bad cut above the eye. But I've got to give a rap to Tony Casado. He's been, I've seen Eastern Suburbs play three times this year, and he's been their best player every, every time I've seen them. Well, he's done some, uh, some torrid work for Eastern Suburbs. He's not the biggest player in the side, but he takes the hit-ups, and then he's two rucks out, and uh, two plays out, I should say, and he's taking the wide ball. He's all over the place. Here he is now with Castle making this tackle. Incredible uh, comeback by this man that wasn't required by his previous club. Um, Western Suburbs it was. He's been to plenty of clubs, Casado. Resurrected by Jack Gibson. And he's leading the way for Eastern Suburbs. There's no doubt about what Blocker says. Lomax will play it. 14 points to 10. Canberra. Three tries to two. Stewart drops it onto the right foot off. And look at the precision of the man. No, Ray, I've got to... I've got to bring you up he kicked it with his left foot and that oh, was a sensational kick was that his left foot was it and Laurie Daly on the sideline there would love to be out the action but this is wouldn't this be nice to have in your armory you can't kick on the right hand side so you just come back top little one over the top half a meter from touch we'll pick up 30 meters there is not a skill of the a skill in the game of rugby league that Ricky Stewart hasn't got number one but number two he performs it repeatedly at a very high level he's got every skill in the book Ted hasn't he Oh, I agree with you, Ray. And this is why he's New South Wales halfback and his performance the other night uh, in the state of origin could earn him a spot as Australian halfback. Well, here's the Roosters now. Pushing it up the hill, but they're only four behind. Shane Walker, he played that last ball. This is Russell. And we're led to believe that the Gaffey will be stitched up and uh, put back into the game blocker. Is that right? That's the mail coming through to here. Yeah, that, that, that'll be happening. Nigel Gaffey will just get, a, get that sewn up in the top of his eye and he'll be straight back out, I'm sure. Well, Brendan Hall in consultation with Freeman. Freeman's having a settling effect on this east side. Even when things are looking uh, fairly grim, he's there talking and settling them down. There's no need for us to press the panic button. There's plenty of time left in this game yet. Well, their confidence is, is fairly good at the moment because they realised if that pass hadn't been forward from Ricky Stewart, I think the game was over. And they probably would have thought that as well. But within a, a set of six tackles and within a couple of minutes, they've scored a try and they're right back into this match. Only four down and Freeman is driving them. With Smith leading the way on this occasion, tackled 21 out centre field. He's banged down right in the centre of the ground, but there's a chance here because this is the great place to attack from. Russell pummeled to the ground by Lomax. That's hurting. Well, it wasn't a bad shot, was he? He's come up with a couple out there. The scissors move involving Freeman. Freeman throws the dummy. Freeman opting to, uh, to go himself. Not often does he do that, but uh, there's the bomb going off that boot of Oda White. Oh, gee, he can put a bomb up this kid. Here's a chance. Casado gets it away. One of the replacements goes close to the line. It's six more tackles, says Annesley. Casado gets it away. Freeman pushes it on. Silver does likewise. Brendan Hall tries to break them. Gets the pass back. Freeman gets it away. Russell's back on his feet and put into touch. Great tackle. Matthew Wood, great tackle. But they're having some trouble with the bombs. Ken Nagus really struggling when the ball goes to the air. Left much too early once again. And in fact, his foot hit the ball. There's the kick from O'Dwyer. Now, Nagus, watch him at the back there. Flies now, and he kicks it. Straight into Tony Casado's hands. Canberra, naturally enough, coming away with the scrum victory, and Meninga is wrapped up 12 metres out from his own line. I'll tell you what, this number nine for Eastern Suburbs, Wayne Marshall's a good player, but this O'Dwyer, he lacks nothing, and gee, he can put a good bomb up. Well, we discussed that when Russell only missed... One game, I think, out of the top grade or two two games for injury, and he, he didn't get straight back into the side. 
and it was a mistake, a bad mistake made by Canberra. He's done everything right, O'Dwyer. We questioned the decision to leave him in the top grade, but he's, he's handled it very nicely. Who was there to drop on that loose ball? You guessed it, it was Casato. They play at uh, Eastern Suburbs on the 20 metre line. And wrapped up and put down is Walker. But here's a chance for Eastern Suburbs. Freeman calling his troops around him. Brendan Hall, he's brought down 15 metres out from the line. With East trailing by four points, here's another chance. Freeman, long pass, Casado out in the centres, pulled down and tackled 10 metres out. Five tackles gone, what will they do? Freeman puts the grubber in, cleaned up by Nagus. He could run the length of the field if he gets out of that tackle. He doesn't. He had four blokes in front of him. <laughs> oh, oh, he was on the fly, but he had 95 to go. Turn it up. I've seen them both. They can both run these two fellas, Ned Ruka and Nagus. Well, another replacement on the sideline. Thick and fast here tonight. Steve Stone as Osborne looks to get a ball away, but no support there. Been under some pressure, the Canberra side. He's sort of looking for a way to make up this four-point deficit. Mal Meninga bumps through two. Bit of vintage stuff there from Mal. He's played well tonight, Mal. Apart from one missed tackle on that first try, defensively he's done some great things. I've got to be honest with you, watching the early part of the game, Meninga and Stewart was like... The old Warriors were just taking a bit of time to uh, to get the kinks out of the, the body following Monday night. And as the game went on, they both started to, to stretch out more freely. Silver plays it back and Prothero goes away. Gaffey's ready to come back on. The number 26 is Stone for Canberra. And while those replacements are getting ready to come on, a mistake made there by Eastern Suburbs and knock on. Ladies and gentlemen. So Canberra with a scrum feed, only 20 out. I feel the tempo of uh, Canberra is picked up after that kick in Eastern Suburbs. It took them about three tackles to get back there, and they still weren't in position. And the last time they were down here, Canberra did score after an error. Well, you made the point that that was the first time that Canberra had had the ball for six tackles in East Territory, and uh, I think your simple way of putting it was, look at what they've done. They scored a try, let's see if they can do it again this time. There's the first tackle expiring, 20 metres out from the eastern suburbs line now that is young Ferner I believe back on the park correction it was Jason Deeth Walters goes across shows it twice runs himself something that Steve Walters hasn't done a lot of tonight maybe he's feeling the effects of it as well Monday night I'm talking about away and out along the line for Meninga to put it on the chest of Nagus who juggled it He's wrapped up and put down 15 metres out from the line. Steve Wall has been unable to run from there because the defence has been so good from Eastern Suburbs. Steve Roach mentioned the market defence is one of their superior parts of their players. Stewart sets for the field goal. Is it successful? They normally are, and up goes the hand from Annesley, robot-like. And a further point goes on the Canberra total. They lead by five in Friday night football. The uh, WACA ground, uh, local officials will be very happy. This crowd, for the third year in a row, has exceeded 20,000. 20,436, in fact. The crowd figures for the third time in a row. Just over the 20,000 marker. Stewart keeps his team out of that danger area with that precision-like kick. And the scrum will go down about 20 metres away from the eastern suburbs line. It's such a big ground uh, in many ways as far as grandstand accommodation is concerned you, you can tend to say to yourself well where are they but then you look again and you say well that's full and that's half full yeah, i'm a little bit disappointed we're stuck up in the, in the box up here ray steve what is the atmosphere like out there it's very hard to pick up from where we are just whether this is a vocal crowd or not yeah they are they're very vocal the good thing about them is they cheer for both sides although canberra are a bit more the favorites tonight Eastern Suburbs coming up with the ball, but also appearing to take it over the touchline. So this could be an interesting ruling here for Annesley. It will probably be a Canberra feed. Yes, he's ruled that way. He's ruled that Eastern Suburbs came up with the mistake of taking the ball over the line. And you see a little bit of help there from Paul Osborne. And the Canberra back line is very deep for this play. Boyle way between the halfway and the 20 meter line Stewart coming around from the right to the left and working with Meninga and uh, the captain has pulled down right on the 30 meter line they're still very much in the center of the park 
Jason Deep. Reserve great hooker for Canberra. And uh, he's out there at the moment, replacing young David Furner. Now away for Stewart, and the cross now from Lomax, and back for Stewart. Steps away from two, puts Lomax further down the ground. Lomax has pulled down eight metres from the line. Five gone, dummy half Steve Walters. Stewart's on the right, he wants it, looked to switch it, but didn't, and then pushes it on further. Steve Stone, grubber kicks, they're fairly big in goals here. Probably the maximum, but that's too deep. Well, the and idea, back to the 22 for the restart. The idea was right, Ray, but just wasn't executed well. Another replacement goes on. Tim Russell once again back out there. And they're looking to keep the play down this end of the field and retain possession, but the kick from Stone just too long. Jeff Orford banged into the ground there by Paul Osborne. I actually thought Stewart might have opted to take another field goal there just to put them six clear. If he could sniff that a try, might have been on out wide. Wasn't the case. 15 to 10. The score will become in contact with all that much, so there could be quite a healthy dividend waiting there for pick the score. 15 to 10. It wouldn't be, I wouldn't think, a common, common pick. I've just got to say, I said earlier in the game that it had been an unhappy start from David Boyle, but he has made up for it. Great front on defence there on two occasions. His work running the football has been very good, so a slow start from him, but he has found his own the longer this game has gone. Pongy. Around the, around the corner pass was a good pass. Kroger did well too to get down and pick it up. But he stayed alert, and that was most important. Walters gives it for Deef to go ahead. Croker now on the wing, Nadruku has been replaced. Fritz back into the fray. Look at that pass by Stewart, a cross out for Wood, Wood for Boyle. Boyle tries to step his way through. He had Matthew Wood backing him up on the inside, but he couldn't get the pass away. Wood goes to dummy half, and Steve Stone is able to pinch another five metres for the Canberra Raiders. They're sailing along cosily at the moment, the Raiders, and now it's fed back for a long-range drop attempt by, uh, by Ricky Stewart. His kick has gone right across the face of the uprights. They'll have to hurry here. Prothero, will he get back into the field of play? No, he won't. That's a great play by Canberra. They've had uh, two chops at the cherry. Look at Ricky Stewart applauding his chasers. Well, it's a big play there. Jason Croker leading the way. He's out on the wing. What a valuable player he is for Canberra, slotting into a couple of positions. Prothero, a little bit of difficulty getting the ball to sit for him. Croker ended up, he didn't come up with the clean tackle, but he did enough to put the man on the deck. Stewart getting underneath it to send Big Fritz back on the warpath, the big fella. Back 30 metres out from the line. Walters using Osborne now. And uh, this injury toll starting to take its, uh, take its effect on eastern suburbs. As we see Canberra with more fresh replacements thrown into the game late. Oh, oh gee, was that oh. flash. He's Castle and Lomax. He's come out of it badly. He's east. Go wide straight away and have made a bust. Prothero, is it? Wrapped up over there. Walker it was. Freeman gives it for Russell to go across the halfway mark. Castle's back on his feet with some assistance. They really came together, Tassel and Lomax. Freeman pushing it on. Deacon gives it for Walker to go inside. Then it's back for little Freeman backing up as he does. He comes to Jason Deeth and he's wrapped up. 20 metres out from the line. Deacon, this is James Smith crossing the 20. Dummy half O'Dwyer. Silver's up in the back line. Casado calls it right. Penalty goes to East right in front, but now he's bringing the mark across. Well, five down, you've nearly got to go for the try here. Running out of time. That's what they've done, O'Dwyer. Looking for Lowry to take the ball forward. He's only two metres out. They need a converted try to go to the lead here. O'Dwyer passing left for Freeman to give it on, and then Brendan Hall works with Gaffey. Gaffey back on the park. Pull down three metres from the line. Again, Boyle low. Great tackle. Away from dummy half goes Steve Deacon. Just short of the line. That would be their third tackle on this set. James Smith goes for the line, but he's forced back. Canberra's defence. They're keeping it tight. 
guarding the play the ball area. Freeman away for Lowry. Lowry pops it onto the chest of Brendan Hall. Hall gets it back. Odewire follows him through the same channel, but he's pulled down. Five metres out. This is the last. Away for Freeman. Can he do something with it? Gaffey finds Freeman. Freeman made the extra man. Jeff Orford. Strict passes. Freeman dives. And it comes away with Nakers for Canberra. Oh, what about the defence? Have you ever seen desperation on an attacking side and a defending side like that? He knew it was the last tackle. Had to keep the ball alive. It looked like an acrobat there. Gary Freeman. What about the strength of Orford here? Staying in. Got a good ball back. Freeman going for the try. Tried to get the pass away. It's just very good football from both sides. Good run, Fritz. Takes a 25 out. Centre field. We've only got five or six minutes to go. And that was a big play there from Canberra to keep their line intact. And again, Fritz takes good yards up the middle. Good, very strong, Fritz, particularly in the hit-up department. Stewart's kick, a long raker. And here's Mullins back on the field for Canberra, leading the chase. Comes up with a good tackle. Well, he's been penalised here. The referee Annesley ruling that, that Mullins was in front of the kicker. I don't know whether I don't think Mullins was. I, I think that the other players who came in to help. No, he wasn't ruled. offside. You're there, quite right. There you see there, Rus uh, Russell Mullins. Russell Mullins. Brett. Brett Mullins. No, we do have some trouble with that family. You see, Pete, only the kicker can put players on side. Exactly. A bloke coming from an onside position, as Mullins did, he's not putting people on side. He doesn't have that. That's right, so the referee spot on there. The other players encroaching in that 10 metres. Not long for Eastern Suburbs to go here. They've got 60 metres to travel. And it's got to be a converted one if they can get it over the line. So some desperation stakes here as we enter the last five. Freeman pushing it away for Brendan Hall to cut out Casado and asking Gaffey to go ahead. Gaffey makes the halfway line. Eastern Suburbs, they've got... Uh, very little time, just under three minutes of the match remaining. Canberra leading 15 to 10. And everybody was asking the question, can the Origin players come back? Well, Belcher and Daly didn't, uh, they didn't make it. Uh, but Meninga, of course, has done that. And so has Rick Stewart. They've come back, answered the question. And of course, Eastern Suburbs, uh, their lone State of Origin player was hurt and taken off about two-thirds of the way through the first half. Canberra showing that they're going to be a force in this uh, Winfield Cup of 1993. They've been battling along without Bradley Clyde for the major part of the season. And again tonight, they've taken on one of the top dogs at the Winfield Cup Eastern Suburbs with no Clyde, no Belcher, no Daly. And Stewart and uh, Meninga backing up. Some unsung heroes out there. Been used very well by Tim Sheens. Fritz has really had a, a good last five minutes here, taking the ball out strongly just when Canberra know that they can't play the, this, the, the ball game down their end of the field. Freeman in a deep position, fielding the kick from Stewart. Silver's been well contained. He hasn't been able to make one of those flashing breaks that we've uh, come to expect. Freeman pushing it across out wide. And, uh, that player out there was in fact Brendan Hall but look at this Canberra defence it's growing it's not slackening it's uh, it's just as intense they're hitting in twos and threes and they're not happy until the job has been done Lowry plays it they go for Freeman and he tries to put Silver up the centre but Lomax blocks the centre up again 33 metres out from the line their own line, unfortunately, for Eastern Suburbs. And Gaffey gives James Smith a passage down the ground. Now, Niger, now it's Gaffey again in the play. This is Orford. He flick passes out the back. Dale Fritz is sitting back there. He picks it up and uh, was able to get the pass away. He was just minding his own business back there. Well, Darren Fritz, not Dale. What about the camera players? They had, had a committee meeting there for a little while. Nearly created a shepherd. Fortunately, no tackler was impeded. But Steve Wallace took a bit of sanity back into proceedings. A couple of tackles left, and again we'll see Stewart drive the ball down. 
and the next tackle. Steve Stone out of dummy half takes it inside the 50. So one more to Fritz. He's done a good job for them. Stewart on the right hand side of the ruck. That's who Steve Wallace looked for. There's some pressure coming on him. What? Oh, he drives the ball in low. Difficult one here to pick up for Shane Walker. He does win. Walker coming 15 metres out from his line. There's the side. It's over, and Canberra have defeated Eastern Suburbs by 15 points to 10. That should return a footy tab dividend for you of $331.30. Pick the score 15 to 10 in favour of the Green Machine. And you can expect $331.30. Steve Roach is moving in the direction of Mal Meninga, so we're hoping to get an interview with the Canberra captain for you in just a moment. But uh, this uh, very, very satisfactory crowd of 20,436. They start to file from the ground as Mal Meninga comes. I put in a great effort and uh, got the points tonight. Mel, how, how hard is it to back up after a state of origin, both mentally and physically? Well, as you know, uh, Rockmass, it's, it's terrible. Um, even backing up four days after a state of origin game, and uh, obviously Queensland side coming off the low, uh, it's very difficult to get up there physically and mentally. But, you know, the other guys show a lot of enthusiasm tonight. When the rest of the players are showing enthusiasm, it sort of brings you along. And it's obvious that uh, the Canberra Raiders are favourites over here in Perth. You enjoy yeah. playing here? Oh, it's excellent over here. We don't mind playing here every week, but uh, that's three wins out of three wins over here, so we'll come, keep coming in. All right, mate. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. Steve Roach there with uh, Mal Meninga and uh, very jubilant captain, the big fella. We'll come and play here every week. Well, from 1995, of course, Mel, they'll have their own, and uh, I don't know that uh, Canberra will be paying too many visits other than maybe one a year. We'll take a break now, and we'll be coming back with Peter Sterling for his wrap of what's happened here at the Wacker. Into the Wacker to play matches over here. They had a pretty good record. I think Canberra have superseded that. Three trips now, and again, they've come up with three wins over here. And as Ray pointed out before the break, on two of those occasions in the past, they've gone on to win premierships. A real gutsy performance here. A lot of injuries in this particular game. And our man of the match, not an easy one to pick, who again was outstanding in a winning side, is now with Steve Roach. Well, the $1,000 Mitsubishi Motors man of the match goes to Ricky Stewart. Ricky, congratulations. Great effort. You had a few injuries coming into the game. Yeah, Steve, we, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, Laurie Daly had to pull out yesterday at training. He pulled a, uh, uh, a thigh muscle and uh, you know, it disrupted us a little bit. But uh, Matthew Woods has been training with the team uh, ever since we've been in camp with the state side. So uh, you know, it wasn't too much of a disruption. I thought Matthew Woods played very well. He certainly did. What about the ground out there in the middle? I mean, it's in, in great condition, this uh, wacker ground. But what about out there in the middle? Oh, it's okay. I mean, we trained it yesterday. It was a fairly, uh, fairly hard where the cricket pitch area is, but uh, they seem to put a lot of water on it overnight, and it pulled up very well. It's, uh, it's a great oval to play on. It's, um, it's good for a fast open game. Yeah, you must be really happy with your team. You'll need a truck to carry all that uh, $1,000 zones, mate. Yeah, it worries me a little bit uh, getting this here tonight because there's a big casino here, so it could be a good night to get it. Congratulations, mate. Enjoy it. <coughs> Thanks, Back mate. to you, Sterlo. 
Yeah, I might be the casino with you, Ricky. And I might be looking for a little bit of a sling as well. Been a big ask on, on, on our representative players, but Ricky Stewart has certainly handled it in a very professional manner. And the way that he drove his team tonight, he cajoled them. He really directed them towards a win, as I said, under trying circumstances. And Teddy Goodwin, he's really putting a lot of pressure on Alan Lang. You mentioned he may get an Australian jersey. He's doing everything right at the moment. He certainly is. He was an inspiration to Canberra tonight. See, we had no daily. Um, Bradley Clyde was out. You, you know, and he, he turned the whole game. One thing, Canberra know how to tackle. They know how to um, attack. I'm, I'm afraid Eastern Suburbs are just going to have to get back and show us how to score tries. They can't. Well, they certainly know how to attack Canberra. And in the 10th minute of the second half, the second try for their replacement player, Nagus, came up again. You mentioned during this call it was the first time that they'd been down there for, for a set of six, and they capitalised. Well, it was the first time. They got inside the, um, the 20 metre. I think Brendan Hall dropped the ball and then bang. They hit you straight away, Canberra. You can't give them a chance. And Nagus, there he goes over for a beautiful try there. Well, a fairly valiant effort from Eastern Suburbs tonight as well. They were very committed and they did strike back a little bit after that. Canberra looked like scoring a try, but Eastern Suburbs took advantage of a long break made. And in the end, on the fifth tackle, they took the option of running the football and came up with a great try. Well, this try, it's incredible. They... They can score tries if they throw the ball around. They, they just keep it very tight. Look at this. It's inside. They know there's men there. And it was a brilliant try. It's one of the best tries of the night. But they just seem to keep it in their pocket, these tries, in attacking formations. Well, you've given plenty of raps to Canberra tonight. Eastern Suburbs, on what you've seen tonight, and I guess you've seen a fair bit of them throughout the season, are they a final five side? They'll have to have Salvatore on the field. Um, Freeman and Salvatore do work well together. Yes, they can make it back into the... Um, the final five um, calculation. I'm sure they'll be there somewhere. But you know, to play Canberra over here in Perth, uh, I can't. I hope. Um, I wish they'd come over here and be the Western Reds, most of them, because you know they haven't lost over here, and the Perth crowd love them over here. But Eastern Suburbs certainly they're not out of it. There's a long way to go yet, and they'll be there somewhere. Now I'm sure they'll have their fingers crossed about Craig Salvatore, hoping that injury won't be too serious. A 15-10 victory here to Canberra, and a very good performance keeps them in calculations. With the final five, they're on eight points. They now move to ten points after this win. We'll have plenty more coming up after the break. But again, the wide world of sports will be bringing you plenty of sport. Welcome now to Brookvale Oval. Big match here at uh, the home of the Sea Eagles today against the Canberra Raiders with all of their stars back. Let's have a look at the Sea Eagles side for today. Tuvi is the uh, captain, of course. It's Hancock, Devereaux, Olgenek, Moore, Elsgood, Lyons, Kosef, Cunningham, Jones, Roberts, O'Donnell, and Alexander. Canberra coming out. And Mal Meninga takes them out to a reception from a very parochial crowd. And a good one, too, under blue skies. Here's their side. Belcher, Nadruka, Meninga, Mullins, Hoppy, Daly, Stewart, and Kroger at the back of the scrum with Ferner partnering Clyde. Hongia comes into the front row with Walters and Fritz. Bill Harrigan's the man that's got the big match here today. John Devereaux will kick off the English importation. He'll do the goal kicking as well. No Matthew Rich for Manly today. Mullins it is that gets first touch and sends it back through Hoppy. He's 15 out from his own line. Paul Vorton joins me as co-commentator today. Yeah, thanks. Very interesting to note that mainly uh, they lost the toss, but Canberra have decided to run into the breeze in the first half. Uh, so mainly will have this gusty Southwester at their back in the first half. And with the kicking game of Cliffy Lyons, they should be able to dominate the first half. But uh, Canberra looking to come home with a wet sail in the second half. Talking of Cliff Lyons, he relishes the opportunity of playing against uh, the Canberra side as the first clearing kick of the day comes off the boot of uh, Ricky Stewart it was not one of his best in fact it was about three out of ten Devereaux wrapped up 35 out from the Canberra line a chance for Manly to attack early in the game has gone through two sets of hands and along the line This is Cunningham now. Young Jamie Olgenick in the run-on side for Manly today, a former Penrith uh, junior. 
I doubt that the Panthers were keen to lose him. Two the away. Lions around the back. Second man play. Hancock in the number one. Looks for Devereaux. Finds him. He's brought down 20 metres out from the line. This is the last. Lions to the air. Not a good kick. It's gone right across the ground. It might turn out to be a beauty. Well, young Ryan. Well, that was oh, real good, I should say. He's a metre short. Amazing play by Manly. The kick came from Clippy. It was a dead set shocker. And they nearly scored a try at it. Here's Clippy looking for it to just to put a high ball up to put some pressure on Belcher. Goes nowhere near Belcher. Straight into uh, Ellsgood's hands. Not much defence there. It's coming now. And they just hang on to him. Manley's tactics very clear even early in the game. Canberra, the way to defend, is a loose ball there. So Canberra making too many mistakes in their own quarter. But Manley will just try and run around this Canberra defence all day. Quentin Pongier in the front row for this match. John Lomax pulling out. Fed by Tuvi. Great opportunity for the Eagles. They've had the ball for the major part of the last 18 tackles. Now it's with Kosem. That's a good tackle. The youngster started to run sideways and he was an easy target for Ferner who makes another tackle. Pulls down Danny Moore. O'Donnell gets it away, taking it up is Roberts. He bounces away from the defence, but he's put down 20 metres out. O'Donnell, Jones, prominent. That's Cunningham, just inside the 20 metre line. Manley, wide and deep to the right. They go to the left, to the blind. Tuvi pulled down. Now it's five gone. Will they put it through the hands? O'Donnell, Lyons, puts the chip bar kick across to the blind side. Daly read the play, and Daly comes down with it for Canberra. Yes, Cliffy had the right idea then to put the kick up, but it really wasn't high enough for it to be an effective kick, and Laurie Daly handled it uh, quite easily in the end. Plenty of Canberra defence here. They've had to defend very well too the first five minutes of this match because of their own ball handling. Pongia. Stewart. Daly. Here's Canberra putting it through the hands inside their own 20 metre line. Not too many clubs would do that. Matt Vruka pulled down 30 metres out but on an early tackle it is the policy of Tim Sheens and uh, many uh, other coaches have used it I suppose but Canberra use it a lot to put the ball through the hands on an early tackle and here they are doing exactly that now but this time on a later tackle and daily it is that punches it down the ground for Hancock to bring it back from 15 metres out from his own line John Devereaux right knee getting some support there from an elastic band and it's Lyons turning it inside Hancock support very shoddy Canberra defence Manly made 40 metres easily then through Kosev Tuvi Jones Alexander Wendekoy, Olgenek, Elskud, he's very fast, ankle tapping tackle, doesn't secure the youngster, Mullins eventually makes the tackle, open game at the moment, Tuvi with a long ball, Kosef is with it, short pass for Roberts, Roberts stands and is pulled down, 18 out, penalty Manly, Canberra inside the five, and an easy two-pointer coming up. And we came into Brookie looking for an open game of rugby league. We're dead set getting it. Some fine attacking skills being showed by both sides. And here's the bus now. Some very ordinary defence there by Canberra. Devro did well to set up Cliffy Lyons. And Cliffy, a beautiful pass back inside to Hancock. He's making his debut in the fullback position. Never played there in first grade before. Devro. Eight out of ten against uh, a countryside last weekend at Mudgee very high straight between the uprights first points to manly they lead canberra two points to eight inclusion in the canberra side kicks off reshuffled the team when lomax pulled out pongia to the front row he went up ferner came into the second big roberts hoping to be named tonight in the australian squad lions running a good decoy to the right trying to take some heat away from alexander but He's pulled down. There's the lowers for you. Manly won reserve grade. President's Cup went to Canberra by a fairly big margin. David O'Donnell's the dummy half. Manly's inside 
their own territory. They're right in the centre of the ground as Lyons puts in the right-footed kick. It gets some assistance off the breeze and 25 metres out it crosses the line. Two of the game's very best kickers in general play. This fellow Lyons and, of course, Ricky Stewart. Madruga coming in from the, the left wing. Clyde was calling for it, but Stewart decided to take it away himself. Clyde just feeling his way into the game in the early exchanges. Good yards for young Ferner. He's eight uh, metres from the halfway. Stewart now, that's the second time on this set of six. Daly, Meninga, Mullins, they all combine. Hoppy falls over. And lost it just in the, in the tackle there. tv has gone down injured in the background. But Canberra, their own uh, worst enemies. Nice ball here from Mullins, and as Hoppy goes down, as he falls over, he loses the ball, knock on. Toovey's still down, he's just getting back to his feet now. Probably cannoned into the hip, I think it was of Brett Mullins, as he tried to take him out of that attacking raid. He's going to stay there and feed this scrum, or Lions are saying, get the lock to feed it. No, Toovey's going to work it. Lions. Inside centre went to the left as a decoy. Elsgood came off the left wing and was on the left wing and was wrapped up by Mullins. A roar from the crowd. They thought it was high. Touch judge didn't move on it. Oh, Jones ran into a ripper. Pong here and Ferner got him jointly. Good heavy stuff. Jeff Tooby goes from the field. Hasler. Jones. Alexander Cunningham I don't know that that was a yes it was Harrigan had a better side of it than I I thought it might have came off the knees there for a moment yes a nice inside ball by uh, Alexander in saying that it was a low pass seven handling errors to four made by Canberra scrums are the same long pass by Stewart Daly runs across the ground Mullins goes straight Struggles away from a would-be tackle. He's put down 20 metres out from the Manly line. Canberra with a chance now if they can hold on to the football. Daly goes across to the right. Belcher comes back to the centre. Finds Ricky Stewart. He looks to promote it left but takes the tackle. He's 18 metres out from the line. No markers on Stewart. Goes himself and takes it within three metres of the line. Walters now to acting half. Still a great chance here for Canberra. Wide ball out for Daly. Daly away for Croker. Croker's put down. He's two metres out from the line. Hasler and O'Donnell making a desperate tackle. Daly away for the big Fritz now. And Fritz is held. He'll have to play the ball a couple of metres still out from the line. Daly at acting half. To the right it comes for Stewart. He pushes it wider. Out there is Ferner. Belcher's in the back line. Throws the dummy to Clyde. Finds Brett Mullins. Mullins throws the pass. Hoppy can't take it. And the referee will put a scrum down. Yes, yeah, exciting play here by Canberra. Manly have done well to hold them out. Canberra at their most dangerous in this part of the ground. And it came out in this, the last pass. Mullins drew the, both those players there. And the knock on there by Hoppy. Tooby goes back on for me. John Jones comes off. Tooby immediately away from the scrum base. Lyons just tried to draw the markers by holding it back for a moment before giving it to Hancock. O'Donnell. Roberts. Bounces out of a tackle. Oh, David O'Donnell picked up and driven. Spear tackle. Or the right word is a dangerous tackle on David Ferner. And he's in a bit of trouble too, O'Donnell, laying on the ground there. Picks him up and pile drives him into the uh, into the turf. Well, Harrigan did not dwell. He just immediately gave the penalty to Manley. 30 metres out from the Manley line. Drew 
Lukaku killed them. Now, O'Donnell, Kosef, they've only got to deliver the final blow. Lions, six more tackles for Manley. Knocked down by Hoppe. Hasler a dummy half. Manley with a full set of six to come. Alexander. O'Donnell. Tovey. Hancock. Well, talk about exciting football. Well, that was a great break made by Owen Cunningham, wasn't it? And it should have been a try. He beat some feeble tackles. A couple there, and away he went. Gary Belson then came over and missed him. But Nadruku does. He's chasing there, Cunningham. He tags him. Then he watch him backpedal there and finally brings down Devereux. Great tackle, Nadruku. And that's been Manly's problem the last four or five weeks, Ray, that they've been making these breaks and creating opportunities for themselves, but not capitalising, not getting the points on the board. Well, that's right. It happened uh, way, way back against Eastern Suburbs here on a Friday. Happening it's Parramatta. Parramatta's Canterbury. the second case in point. Bob Fulton has been loath to take any glory away from the, the teams that have beaten Manly, pointing out at the same time that his team had had a hundred times or a hundred opportunities to win the match. Fritz, solid tackle by two of the small men, Hasler and Tuvi. He took on this Goliath and put him away. Ferner, this is the last for the, the green machine, but they're not looking like a machine today. Stewart, he finds the line 40 metres out from Manley's goal line. Great part of the world here. Lions. More straight up the centre. Flat and hard. Now can Nadruka do it again? Here he comes, and he's made the tackle. Oh, genius. Oh, Nadruka. There, Deacon. He could be the king for a day if he wanted to be. Toby throws it away. Kosef is with it. Well, they're all offside, Cameron. Never got back onside at all. Played by Kosef. Lions, B. now through to Aljanek. He cuts inside, Hancock will score. Forward pass rate, unbelievable. Oh, another, op another opportunity and it's gone. But Nadruku, whatever they're paying him, they should double it. He saved them 12 points today. Denny Moore made the break, got through some poor defence once again. And Nadruku, just the last ditch tackle sensational and more he was nearly going to go for the double movement he started at the last moment here's the last movement floats this one out and it goes probably a meter forward the watchers of the game must be and they're the fans they love action they love plenty of ball movement and these two sides are giving it to them today fatty brett mullins comes from the field Stewart, that's out on the full. Yeah, the good keen defence by the Manly side. Pressure put on Stewart by O'Donnell then. So Manly now, in he came O'Donnell, just let him know he was about, and that made the, the poor kick come about. Here they come again, Manly. They're coming at Canberra like waves off the coast here on the peninsula. Roberts gets a pass away. Devereaux scooped it off the ground. Alexander will take it down for the play the ball. O'Donnell. Blindside play for young Kosef. Manley seems certain to score twice. Now Hasler. There he goes again with this attempt to hurdle the defence. Tuvi. Lions. Plenty of forwards to give it to. Cunningham's the runner. Five tackles gone for Manley. Lions goes from dummy half. Kicks ahead. Where's that football now? It's six more for Manley. Six more tackles. Can Canberra endure this? Cliffy Lions takes it to ground on one.
concern of the tackler. O'Donnell away, bad pass. Tuvi gets under one, taken by Pongia. That's the second. Hasler to the right. It's with the Kosef. A cutout pass for Devereaux. Devereaux passes, finds Danny Moore. Moore gets it back to Kosef. Now it's back with Tuvi. Then it's with Lyons. Now a lofted pass to Elskud. Elskud comes to Daly. He's wrapped up and he'll play the ball. That would be four tackles gone, if my memory serves me correctly. O'Donnell away, Roberts launches himself at the centre of the yard of the defence. Alexander's tackle, that's the fourth tackle now. O'Donnell away for Tuvi, turns it back inside for Cunningham. That should be five, it is. O'Donnell's the, the, the acting half again. Away for Tuvi, on for Lyons, puts the kick in behind. Ned Ruka takes it over the dead ball line. Oh, I'll give the Canberra defence some credit here. Whilst they've missed 17 tackles, their on, online defence has been outstanding. They've adjusted, readjusted and multi-adjusted to just cover this manly attacking four race. It's, it's great footy, Rabs. Well, this will go down as one of the, the great defensive passages of 1993. I'm not sure of how many tackles they've had to withstand. Roberts, you've been watching it with us and I'm sure it must be looking like the 20s proportion. Roberts away, now it's with Kosef, stands and turns it back for Hasler. Tuvi's outside in, Tuvi goes through, Tuvi's got Hasler with him, Hasler gets the hole and came off Cunningham's head. It's gone over the dead ball line and it's out to the 22 for the restart. And Canberra get the respite. <laughs> and they needed it under all sorts of pressure. Once again, Tuvi put the foot down, went through the big hole, and Hasler now onto Cunningham, straight off his noggin. And that's the ball for Canberra, 20 metres out from their own line. Quality stuff every time he handles the ball. He's had a pretty solid comeback to the game. He's been out six weeks, Bradley Clyde, looking for a spot in the Australian side. He's done nothing outstanding, but he's been there and thereabouts all game. His defence has been fine, and whenever he's been required to have a hit up, he's done pretty well. Meninga now into some space. Stewart, long pass out, looking for David Ferner, finding him with pinpoint accuracy. Good yards by David Ferner. They're not finished yet. Now it's with Pongia. Have they got the pace? Toby's got him! Jeffrey Toby brings him down. Ten metres out from the line. That's a turnover. Oh, yeah. Great tackle, Jeff Toby. Great talk rugby about, league here today. Yeah, talk about Madruga. That was just as good, if not better, by Toobes. The big flashing run by Ferner. He's beaten 46 of them. Straight down the middle. And then Pongia hot-footed it for the line. Here's Ferner now, he's beaten, he's a big gap was there, he's beat Hancock, bumped off Olsnick, and away he goes. And Ponga thought he was going to score, but Tuvi cut him down. Hasler, 30 metres out from his own line. David O'Donnell, Daly makes the tackle, five gone. Close to half time, through the hands of the halves, then to Devereaux. Defence coming across, draws them, Olgenek, Olgenek beats the tackle of and eventually, and finally, Manly scores. Nice work by Manly, Devereaux did well, Olgenek, he gets the four points. Well, it had to come and it came from deep in their own territory. Some pretty ordinary defence out there by some of the Canberra players. Meninga came up when he shouldn't have. And then Devereaux into some space. He drew Nadruku. One-on-one, -on -one, Belcher on Olgenek. And Badge couldn't get him. And the Manly side finally crack it for the try. A cute angle. It's got the height, but it's just wide. So the half-time score at Brookvale. Manly leading Canberra. Six points to nil. We'll be back after a break with David Ferner. Kicks off to start the second stanza of this game. He'll only need to be half as good to be good enough. Devereaux tackled by Meninga and also Croker. Alexander. I noticed uh, on that particular play that Kosev 
Wren is the decoy. Lyon spreading it across and Hancock handled before Elsgood was tackled about 25 metres out from his line. Now, John Hopawati is on the ground. This is his first touch of the football. He's beaten three of them. Stewart takes him. Ten metres out from the line. Manly with a chance to wrap it up here, really. Lions out for Danny Moore. Mel Meninga takes him to ground. It's picked up where it left off this game. Lions for O'Donnell. Now for Hasler. John Hopawati. Two metres from the line. Oh. That's the turnover. And desperate defence once again by Canberra. Their first up defence has been fairly abysmal. Hopawati made a 50 metre burst there. He was playing Jersey flag last year, but he's a good player. Here it is here from dummy half. The marker was held. Boyle was held. And Hopawati streaked down the touchline. Beat Belcher. His defence is... Uh, one a bit ordinary, but Ricky Stewart came over and cover and saved it. They're on the Canberra 40 metre line, played by Gary Belcher. Through Jason Croker into the hands of Daly, showed it to one, gave it to Meninga. Now Nad Ruka! Nad Ruka! Over the halfway line. Yeah, nice tackle by Cunningham coming over and cover. Good second row play. Pongy, inside ball, Bradley Clark. Nine metres into Manley's area. Six nil the score in favour of Manly. Stewart letting Fritz go, let another one go, still with the ball. Meninga now for Croker. And a great deal of ground gained by all of that. Damn. Wide for Belcher to knock on. Uh, the mistakes continue for Croker. Yes, long floating pass there by Laurie Daly. And Belcher running onto it, had to stretch for it and reach for it, and couldn't hang onto it in the end. Tuvi coming straight across the ground, and Lyons goes straight ahead. Ferner did well for a second rower. He broke very quickly to get across in cover. Kosef takes the tackle before advancing for Hasler to push Alexander forward. Riding ahead, 22 metres from the Canberra line. Here they come again, O'Donnell, that's Roberts, this is Lyons, now Hopawati stands and gives a forward pass I thought for Cliffy Lyons, but it goes unchecked, Elsgood wrestled down, O'Donnell off to the blind side. And 22 metres out from the Canberra line. Tuvi, dummies to Alexander, dances away from two, then Kosef into the hands of Cunningham, now it's Moore striding to the 20, supporting was Alexander, likewise Hasler, Hasler 10 metres out from the line, still not tackled, got a fair pass away, not a fair pass, a cracker of a pass, now Devereaux, Devereaux taken to ground by Belcher and by Clyde, and Gary Belcher criticised him in the, today for his defence. He's made three beautiful tackles there in a row, saved three tries, and in the end, got his hand on that at about the 18th try, but he got there. Stewart's drop kick. 50 metres, bar one. Moore goes back. O'Donnell. Roberts... Joseph Hasler Canberra two points in front of Manly on the Winfield Cup ladder over the sideline I've got a fancy that it came off Canberra yes it came off Val Meninga who was affecting the tackle on Denny Moore this will be uh a scrum feed to Manly and more pressure for Canberra. 
Now, a chance for Manly. Lions running across the park, letting decoys go inside. Eventually, Elsgood gets out of the tackle. He'll score! This defence of Canberra's, this sliding defence, it's a good, a good defence, it's worked well today, but it, you cannot afford to miss any tackles, it puts pressure on you, and it's one on one here, we've got Elsgood on Hoppy, and away goes Elsgood, stepped inside, Heather, he's been on there four seconds, he was never going to get Elsgood, who's very, very quick, and they stood well, they talked, communicated, but it came down to a one on one situation, and Elsgood, nice left foot step, too strong for Hoppy. Way off the boot, okay, but it's just, just one. 10 0 in favour of Manly over Canberra. Ferner gets us underway again. Well, that, that hill back to recovery is looking a little bit steeper now for Canberra. Hancock. They've got plenty of confidence in their sails now, Manly. Kosev. Magnificent game from him. Looking at him uh, out there, he's taken on a very, very confident stature. Responsible position that he's uh, occupied today and handled it very well. This is Alexander. Hasler. Away from Osborne, away from another. Pongier pulled down, but he was pulled down 20 metres up, uh, up the park. Now quick play, the ball, Lions. Puts it down for Gary Belcher. He's had a busy afternoon, Gary. And probably one that he won't be very happy with. Madruka, Stewart, Daly, Hoppy out wide. Um, just getting the impression watching some of these Canberra players closely through the binoculars, Paul, that, that huge defensive strain or drain has started to take its toll. Stewart. Daly, Meninga, Belcher, Nadruka inside, puts 